Sometime during the summer, I read uh, Tom Holland's book, Rubicon, which mainly told the story of how uh, Julius Caesar took over Rome. I found it very, very informative, uh, a lot of information in there, very well written. It was exactly the opposite of dry as dust history. Then I found out that Tom Holland had another book coming out in the fall called uh, Pax. Frankly, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Well, to paraphrase uh, Julius Caesar, I got it, I read it, and I enjoyed it. This one tells the story of the 14 emperors who ruled Rome in the years from uh, around 68 AD to 138, about 70 years. And that's roughly from around the time of uh, Nero's suicide up to the death of Hadrian. I never heard of most of the 14 emperors who were included in this book. And even the ones that I think I had heard of, I, I really didn't know very much about. And that includes people like Vespasian, Trajan, Hadrian, and so on. And maybe the reason, the only reason I had heard of them at all is the, the, because of the amount of monuments and stuff uh, that feature them that you see when you visit Rome. Now, where you would think that a kind of narrative history of a bunch of people that you know, you, or in this case me, never heard of, would bog down, it never really does. And the reason is that Tom Holland, uh, in, in the book, he goes all over the Roman Empire. He describes what life is like in all these different places, and he describes a bunch of stuff that uh, was part of uh, daily life. Uh, he makes you feel like you're actually there. It's like you're uh, time traveling or something. There were some things that really uh, stood out to this book for me. And the first one really was uh, the kind of goofy relationship that the emperors had with the uh, Senate. Uh, I mean, these guys are emperors. They control anybody who sits in the Senate. If there's a troublemaker there, they can get rid of them. They can put in the guys who uh, support them. But they really paid attention to getting a kind of a senatorial seal of approval on the kind of stuff that they were doing. It, to me, it sounded a little bit odd. Uh, they really respected those kind of formalities. And the other thing was maybe even more important than the Senate was keeping the people of Rome happy. Uh, they had to feed them. They had to keep them employed. Uh, they had to build a bunch of stuff. They had to entertain them. And entertainment for the Roman mob was, uh, quite frankly, uh, kind of the NFL on steroids. They really liked gladiators and things like that. So he had to take care of that thing. Now, the next thing that uh, he had to worry about, and it, it turns out to be super important, was the uh, Roman legions. You know, in other words, the army. And the army did a few things. One of them was they kind of uh, protected the borders of the em empire from uh, barbarians or anybody who was going to come and, you know, try to invade. The other thing was that if you had a province where uh, the citizens were getting a little bit cranky, the Roman legions would take care of that. And they had a pretty simple pacification technique. It was absolutely ruthless terror. These guys, this was a super efficient killing machine. Now, you've got all this power in these legions, and the other thing they could do is make or break an emperor. And sometimes they did. So uh, in addition to uh, dealing with whatever kind of imperial paperwork there was, the emperor's got to keep an eye on, uh, on uh, keeping Rome happy, the city of Rome happy. He's got to keep these legions in order. And uh, if he does that, he can stay in power. Uh, the successful ones obviously all did it. Now, I'll tell you, uh, his treatment of the eruption of uh, Mount Vesuvius alone is worth the price of the book. 
He describes life in Herculaneum and Pompeii in, in a fair amount of detail. You get a, a kind of a sense of what uh, life was like there, particularly politics in there. And then he describes what happens when you have uh, Vesuvius uh, blowing up. Now, what he did was he's got a, a bunch of ancient writings that describe all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, the two Pliny boys, the elder and the younger, they were there. They saw it and they wrote about it. Uh, but there were other people who wrote about it, too. Uh, he's got, he can look at the archaeological remains and figure a bunch of stuff out. And then also he uh, evidently consulted volcanologists. To who were able to describe what they theorize actually happened. So he's able to give a kind of a minute by minute uh, account of what happened and how these two cities were destroyed. Like I say, worth the price of the book. I think that uh, this book, Pax, and I've, I, the, the subtitle is something like uh, uh, war and peace in Rome's golden age. I found it very, very interesting, uh, at, at times very exciting. Uh, it's really a good book. I, I'll tell you, I don't think that you have to be some kind of a nut for uh, ancient history to enjoy this book. Probably it's enough if uh, you watch the movie Gladiator and really liked it, which I did, and if you like to read, put those two things together and you, you're probably going to like, uh, like this book. I did. Uh, and I, I'll tell you what, I, I, I think you might, you might consider giving it a try. I'll see you next week. That's all I got this week. In the meantime, everybody take care. <laughs>